اللي هو مايدير ام دكتور علاء مصباح بروفيسور اوف اوبستيتكس اند جينيكولوجي فاكولتي اوف ميدس منصوره يونيفرستي The topic of my lecture today about shoulder distortion. So what we wanted to discuss today? The definition, the incidence, the risk factors, classification, how to diagnose, treatment, and lastly the complication. Let us start our journey with the definition. What is the definition of the shoulder distortion? Please look to the picture here. A delivery in which additional maneuver are required to deliver the fetus or the shoulders after normal gentle downward traction has failed. So we try to do gentle downward traction on the fetal head. However, we cannot deliver the shoulder except after doing certain maneuver. It can occur in one shoulder, like the anterior shoulder or posterior shoulder or both of them. Okay. The impaction here is not soft tissue impaction. It is bony impaction between the bone of the shoulder and that of the symphysis pubis of the anterior shoulder or the bone of the shoulder with that of the sacral promontory if it is a posterior one. It is one of the most important obstetric emergency. You should know about it. So, to understand it more please look to this picture it is a fundamental mechanical problem as you see here this is the biochromial diameter which range between 12 to 15 and the average gynecoid pelvis anteroposterior diameter about 12 centimeter while the transverse diameter is 13 centimeter and the baby try to accommodate to enter through the diameters of the pelvis okay by approximation of both shoulder together what is the incidence the incidence variable it occur between 0.6 to 1.4 percent of all infants with a birth weight between 2500 gram and to 4000 gram i expect and all of us expect the rate to be increased if the weight of the baby is increased. So it is five to nine percent among the fetus weighting four thousand up to four thousand five hundred gram baby in a mother without diabetes. What are the risk factors? mainly two groups maternal and fetal or maybe labor related let us start with the maternal and fetal fetal macrosomia maternal obesity diabetes mellitus during a pregnancy post-term pregnancy male gender excessive maternal weight gain advanced maternal age period macrosomic baby Period occurrence of shoulder dystocia, short stature, and contracted pelvis or flat pelvic pelvis. What are the risk factors related to labor? First stage of labor abnormalities, like arrest disorder or protraction disorder. Prolonged second stage of labor, oxytocin infusion during labor, mid forceps or mid vacuum extraction. We can classify the shoulder dissocia into bilateral or unilateral according if both shoulder it is bilateral. If one shoulder, commonly the anterior one, it is called unilateral. Of course, the more severe is the condition, the bilateral one. Okay? Here the anterior shoulder is impacted behind or above the symphysis pubis as you see. Posterior shoulder, if it is affected, impacted in, at the sacral promontory. Okay. How to diagnose? It is anticipated in women who have risk factor, as we mentioned before. Various sonographic parameters to evaluate macrosomic fetus will help us. Fetal weight expected more than 4 kg, the risk is higher. During labor, Protract the cervical dilatation 
and the prolonged second stage and difficult or prolonged delivery or mid vacuum or forceps extraction all of them anticipating that this woman may have a problem during delivery when the head emerged through the enteroitis then it will retract on the perineum and this is called turtle sign look at this picture the head delivered then retract and the chin is closely applied on the perineum you can see the neck of the baby this is called turtle sign gentle traction on the head trying to deliver the shoulder fairly to deliver the shoulder the face become congested and you can't do vaginal examination easily how to prevent preconception maternal weight reduction is an important factor also you should advise any pregnant lady about the maternal weight gain during the pregnancy and the normal range induction of labor for post birth don't be late for induction or labor for these cases elective cesarean section when indicated for macrosomic baby if you diagnose it clinically and by ultrasound by expected fetal weight and abdominal circumference and so on Elective cesarean section is a protective from occurrence of such condition. Control of diabetes, whether diabetes before pregnancy or during the pregnancy, and you should discover gestational diabetes early and manage it properly. Ultrasound scanning and measure the expected fetal weight regularly, especially in the high risk group. What you are going to do to treat? First, call for help. You need senior obstetrician, you need anesthetist, you need to do the delivery in a well equipped hospital and available assistant and the neurologist. Avoid fundal pressure because it will make the condition more worse because it is a pony infection, it is not soft tissue infection, it is pony infection. So, fundal pressure will make the condition more worse monitor to avoid completely fonder pressure remember this one monitor the fetal heart rate during delivery episiotomy as you see in the picture may be needed not to deliver the shoulder but to facilitate the maneuver you are going to do to try to deliver the shoulder because episiotomy will widen the enteroitis, yes, but it is at the level of the soft tissue, not the bone, which is the, the problem. It is bony infection of the shoulder. Steps of for treatment go on to certain steps, as we will mention. And please remember, don't take more than 30 seconds in each step. First, try, try the macrobert maneuver. Ask the assistant to flex the leg of the lady on her abdomen with abduction. This is important and this is called the Macrober maneuver as you see in the picture. It makes the promontory of the sacrum flatten, decrease lower doses, increase the plane of pelvic inlet and make the symphysis pubis shifted kephalate. So this Macrober position is very important. Okay. As you see the same in this picture. Then do suprapubic pressure, which is called the Robin One maneuver. Suprapubic uh, pressure is done like if you are doing cardiopulmonary resuscitation the same way. And during th this maneuver, you apply pressure on the shoulder, on the, on the fetal anterior shoulder. Okay. like in this picture in the posterior aspect of the anterior shoulder toward the chest of the baby so you are doing suprapubic pressure on the back of the anterior shoulder in the direction of the chest of the baby this maneuver 
trying to decrease the acromial diameter. Okay? So, the baby may be delivered with this maneuver. And fortunately, more than 50% of cases with macro position and the suprapubic pressure succeeds in delivery of the shoulder. So, start with macro and suprapubic pressure. If filled, go to the Rupin 2 maneuver. What is Rupin 2 maneuver? Please look at this picture. Insert two fingers inside the vagina to the back of the anterior shoulder. Try to push the shoulder in the direction of the fetal chest, as you see here in the direction of the arrow, like that. This trying to decrease the diameter, the biacromial diameter, and also the change the, the diameter where the, the biacromial diameter enters through the pelvis. Okay? So, Ruben to maneuver by two finger on the back of the anterior shoulder, pushing it toward the baby's chest, like that in the picture, this motion will abduct the fetal shoulder girdle, reducing its diameter. If it is failed, go to wood corkscrew maneuver, as in this picture. As you see here, you are trying by one hand, by two finger in the vagina, on the anterior surface of the posterior shoulder. Okay, a while two finger, other two finger on the back of the anterior shoulder. Try to rotate the shoulder girdle in this direction, this direction of the arrow. Okay, 180 degree. A while you are doing gentle traction on the head because at any moment this shoulder girdle may enter into diameter which it can pass in the pelvic end. Okay? So, downward traction should be continued during this rotational maneuver, simulating the rotation of a screw being removed. Okay? If it is filled, do the reverse. Reverse would corkscrew maneuver. We are doing the same by rotating in the reverse direction 180 degree as you see in the picture. This maneuver adduct the fetal posterior shoulder in an attempt to rotate the shoulder out of the impacted position and into an oblique plane for delivery. If failed, go to the next step remove the posterior arm or try to deliver the posterior arm how by inserting the hand inside the vagina try to reach the elbow then flex the arm of the baby then hold the hand of the baby then sweep the hand with the forearm out be careful not to do traction on the upper arm, so not to do fracture in the humerus. So, the posterior hand, followed by the arm and the shoulder, will be delivered, facilitating the delivery of the ankle. If filled, you can go to all four maneuvers, as you see in this picture. This is one of the position you can deliver the lady in all four maneuvers, or the modified one here by the, the patient on her hands and the knee. And you can also do this with approximation of the side to the abdomen, simulating McRobert position, okay? Okay. The true obstetric conjugate of the inlet is increased by 10 millimeter and the sagittal measurement of the pelvic outlet increased by 20 millimeter in such a position. 
And you should know that all four position is compatible with all intravaginal manipulation. You can do all manipulation in this position for shoulder dissociation. If Phil, you have another maneuver called the Vanelli maneuver. What is the Vanelli maneuver? Look to this picture, please. You, you are trying to rotate the head in the reverse direction, in the direction of the occipital anterior, then increase flexion of the head, then push the head up and continue pushing the head inside the uterus. Of course, when the uterus is relaxed and you may need the colosis during this maneuver, then do cesarean section. So, the vanilla maneuver means cephalic replacement followed by cesarean section. Sometimes all methods fail and you have no facilities for cesarean section and you are in a very, very emergency situation, you may ha have an, uh, an aggressive maneuver by inducing fractured clavicle at the mid portion, as in the picture, and directed upwards. And the posterior clavicle is generally most acceptable, but be careful not to injure the subclavian vessel or apex of the lung. What is the aim of the fracture clavicle? It reduces the shoulder to shoulder distance. So the shoulder girdle would decrease with the fractured clavicle. Okay? But it is, of course, aggressive maneuver. Symphysiotomy rarely needed nowadays. What is symphysiotomy? We cut the symphysis pubis here, which is fibrocartilaginous joint between the two pubic bone. We cut here under local anesthesia, and you should insert full caster before doing it and try to protect the bladder because it is at high risk of being injured during this maneuver. Symphysiotomy will widen the pelvic inlet and allow the delivery of the shoulder. Everything should be documented about the, the method of the delivery and if any complication happened to the mother or to the fetus any brachial plexus injury should be documented. Each maneuver take how much time? I said each step shouldn't take more than 30 seconds, as I mentioned before, and you should follow the steps as we said, okay? And the delivery should be reviewed with the parents and the management and the prognosis for any infant policy should be explained. So what about the complication of shoulder dystocia, maybe fetal or maternal? Fetal like what? The most common is the brachial plexus palsy, also fracture clavicle or fracture humerus, fetal death, fetal hypoxia, with or without permanent neurologic damage. For the mother, Postpartum hemorrhage due to atony, due to trine rupture, due to vaginal or cervical laceration or perineal laceration or extended episiotomy or perineal tear, rectovaginal fistula, symphysial separation, whether without transient femoral neuropathy, third or fourth degree tear, perineal tear and the trine rupture. Let us speak about the brachial plexus injury. The injury may include stretching for brachial plexus, edema, hemorrhage, laceration, or tearing, which is the most severe one. For the cervical nerve root, due to forcible lateral flexion of the neck during delivery of the head in cases with shoulder distortion. As you see here, 
T5 and 6 is responsible for Arab's policy. T7, 8, and thoracic 1 is responsible for clumpic palsy. How the baby lock in herpes palsy, as you see in the picture here, the arms lie aside on the side of the trunk with forearm extended and internally rotated with clenched finger. Waiter tap position, as you see here. Waiter tap position. This is due to injury, injury to cervical 5 and 6. What about clumpic palsy due to injury of cervical 7, 8, and thoracic 1? There is rest drop, as you see in the picture here. And if you are trying to do grasp reflex, it will be negative. So absent grasp reflex. And the atrophy of the small, small muscles of the head. There is paralysis of the muscles of the forearm and rest drop. What is the prognosis? In cases with nerve root compression, edema, or just a stretch, prognosis is good. And the complete recovery usually occurs with physiotherapy. But in rare cases with tear or rupture of the nerve, recovery is much less likely and permanent paralysis may occur. Thank you. I'm Dr. Alaa Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and the Gynecology Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University.